One of the things I'm going to do more of in 2019 is experiments. So I thought I'd take a look and see what the Flat Earthers are doing and go from there. I'm Howard George Stirrup. Here we've got a very simple experiment that you can make for yourself that proves that the stars are not what we've been taught. That's right, this is three easy do-it-yourself experiments from a flat earther. Welcome everyone to the first Flat Earth Friday of 2019. My name is Simon Dan and I am delighted that you can join me. Yes, that clip was from YouTuber Howard George Stirrup, who not only has an awkward presenting style, but he's also got three Flat Earth experiments that you can do to prove that we're being lied to. So let's get stuck in. Throughout history, we've been distracted and divided. I don't know about you, but I'm distracted already by the ocean. By having beliefs in other people's theories and second-hand information, stop the debate. Just do the experiments at sea level and see for yourself. By observing buildings entirely from top to bottom, 10 to 30 miles along the coast, this confirms that the Earth does not curve 8 inches per mile squared, as it would have to if it truly was 25,000 miles in circumference. This is irrefutable evidence that we are being lied to about the dimensions and the situation of where we are. Without any sort of images from Howard, I can pretty much guarantee that these photos where you can see the whole building from 30 or 40 miles away are either taken from a high elevation or the buildings themselves are elevated. Along with evolution and quantum physics propaganda, we are having our beliefs and understanding misled. This leads us to be materialistic and blind and insensitive to all the other problems around the world. Thank you. Disagree. I think having the knowledge that I do about this world gives me focus. It allows me to accept my place in the universe for what it really is. And this in turn, allows me to spend more time focusing on real world problems. For example, can you imagine if I said that the sky was not actually blue, but it was in actual fact green? And then I amassed a following of people that believe the same thing as me about the colour of the sky. And then me and those people tried to convince other people about the true sky colour. Imagine wasting that much time on something so petty and nonsensical, diverting attention from real problems of the world. I'm Howard George Stirrup. Here we've got a very simple experiment that you can make for yourself that proves that the stars are not what we've been taught. Hang on. Howard's got a few continuity issues there, but we'll let him off. Zoom in on the brightest star or planet in the sky and record a short video. <laughs> yeah, that's an out of focus star. What's your point? The reason I'm making these videos isn't to push my beliefs onto people, but rather that you see how easy you can make the experiments for yourselves. Well, that first one wasn't an experiment, it was an observation. And you hashed it up, so... Um, my favourite of all is to get two glasses of water and place one under the moonlight and one in shade of the moonlight. Leave them for about 30 minutes, and with a thermostat for food, you can go and check for yourselves. I'm not going to wait, make a 30 minute video. Whoa, 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 whoa. You mean to tell me you've conducted this experiment inside? 
inside. Uh, and you'll see that the one under the moonlight is always two or three degrees Fahrenheit colder, proving that the moon is not a reflection of the sun. Is that what it proves, is it? I wouldn't say that. I'd say that it proves that a glass of water that is next to an open window is colder than a glass of water that's inside your house. As it would be warm or neutral, it's a negative charge to our atmosphere. It chills the water. Negative polarity, yin yang. That sentence was about as scientific as a four-year-old's colouring book. So science is uh, supposed to be observable measurable, repeatable, and falsifiable. So come on, prove me wrong. I thought you'd never ask. If you'd have conducted this experiment outside, then at least I could have given you kudos for that. But your setup is so village, it's unreal. I've spoken about this many times, but the colder temperature in moonlight is due to something called radiative cooling. Essentially, if there's nothing to block the heat from radiating away from that water, then it will do so at a faster rate than a glass of water in the shade. You could say that the shaded water is insulated slightly by its cover. That is why it's warmer. Hi, I'm Howard George Sturrer. I'd like to show you how easy you can make an experiment to prove that the moonlight is not a reflection of the sun but rather the moon projects its own light. Silver, negative, cold, like a proton in a very big atom, atmosphere. Let's see, half an illuminated moon in the blue sky coming up in the east, above our horizon. That's behind our globe, while the sun, going down on the west, is in theory in front of our globe. As both bodies are above our horizon at this time, that means that Earth cannot be casting a shadow on the moon. Oh my days, he thinks the moon phases are caused by Earth's shadow. And it also doesn't explain why we see half a moon if the face of the moon is always facing us and it's directly opposite the sun we should see a full moon but we don't so we should be asking questions and making more experiments and listening less to the authorities that we know take our money thank you very much Howard, I'd place a bet with you that they weren't in opposite positions of the sky. And secondly, the phases of the moon are caused by its position in its orbit, not by Earth's shadow. If you really want to see the Earth's shadow, take a look at this picture from a lunar eclipse. It is five separate photos from five different points during the eclipse stitched together. I think you can clearly see the Earth's shadow here. Wow. Howard finishes his video with the same old flat Earth BS. Take a look if you like, but it really is a load of drivel. So there we have it. Three flat earth experiments that you can all do yourself. All of them completely flawed. What a way to see Flat Earth Friday into 2019. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed that or even share it if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan and I'll see you all Sunday evening for the first ever live astronomy lecture where we're taking a look at the history of astronomy. In the film The Matrix, Morpheus offers Neo a choice. Take the red pill or the blue pill. If Neo chose the blue pill, he would wake up in his bed and believe whatever he wanted to believe. If he chose the red pill, however, he would stay in Wonderland and Morpheus would show him how deep the rabbit hole goes. So when we look at a channel called Red Pill Philosophy, there's no prizes for guessing what the content's gonna be about. If you notice what's going on here, there's just enough, quote, wiggle room for both the globe and the flat model to work. But notice that the globe model, time and time again, tells you you can't trust yourself. Your senses are fooling you. Don't trust yourself. You have to place your faith in the physicalist atheist priests who tell you what's right. 
You are insane and stupid, says Valhalla56. And you're a stupid globe cult member who believes in the sphere on blind faith and never actually studied the science that's alleged to back it up. So you are a blind faith cult member. Oh, here we go again. Welcome one and all to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you all very much for joining me. Yes, that opening clip was from Red Pill Philosophy and the video is entitled Why I Became a Skeptic. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I imagine it's because he watched a whole load of YouTube videos. Who knows? Today though, we'll be taking a look at his video entitled The Globe is a Fairy Tale for Retarded People. Literally insulting billions in one breath. Nice. Hey guys, a little bit late, but I'm up uh, doing a little bit of high IQ, you know, skeptic uh, uh, research. Oh yes, I'm just doing some high IQ level research, please. There's no need to begin with that whatsoever. Show off. As you can see here, you know, a gazillion tabs open. <laughs> That's how it is. You know, looking into Eratosthenes, blah, blah, blah. Indeed doing high IQ research, but says the word gazillion. Right. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's crazy shit, but I just want to do a real quick video because, you know, lighting is shit. Let me see if I can get some extra lighting in here. Yeah, there you go. It's a little better. Um, it's just, there's, I mean, when you, when you really start doing the high IQ, um, you know, just skepticism, when you start exercising high IQ skepticism, I mean, you just, you know, and you got 30 tabs open because you're researching, you're just you know, using high IQ research and stuff like that, like. Do you think he's got a high IQ by any chance? You really just do get to the point where you're like, there's no way we live on a fucking ball. <laughs> there's no way we live on a fucking globe. It's just. Ah, uh, no, he hasn't. The globe is the most, um, a genius uh, deception, basically, is the best way to put it. And again, guys, this is after literally probably thousands of hours of reach, researching high IQ skepticism, basically. you know. Yes, we get it. You think you have a high IQ. In my experience, people that boast about their IQs usually have one that's lower than the fat content of an iceberg lettuce. Your belief in a flat earth confirms that. Because I'm a big fan of like being a skeptic, not believing you live on a globe just because your first grade teacher told you via blind faith. Your first grade teacher also probably told you what the letter A was and what sound it makes. Where was your skepticism then, hey? Um, I'm actually a fan, I'm, 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 I just, I'm a proud member of the skeptic community. I don't know if you guys, you know, like skepticism, you know, I'm a big, you know, I'm, I subscribe to like skeptic magazine, like basically for me, it's like, I'm a proud skeptic. He's a proud skeptic, but he swallowed the flat earth thing. I'm not really sure he understands what skepticism is. Um, are you a skeptic? That's the question, though. Not everyone's a skeptic. Um, so, you know, yeah, there's just no way we live on a globe. It's just, <laughs> it's just horseshit. It's okay. First of all, you, you, as far as your experience is concerned, it's always flat. It always looks flat. Always feels flat. You never feel like you're going around the underside of a spinning ball. You never feel anything. Even in, I mean, I was on a flight like a month ago. Literally ten hours flying. <laughs> You never see or feel any curvature. It's always just, oh, look, I'm just going like this. <laughs> it's literally, that's literally every second of your life, this is just, this is you. Mm. <laughs> There's never any of this. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> In case you missed it, here it is again. A self-proclaimed high IQ skeptic telling us why he thinks the earth is flat. <laughs> There's never any of this. And one more time in case you were laughing too much. Ooh. <laughs> you never experienced that. You only experienced that on a roller coaster. But guess what? We don't live on a fucking roller coaster, even though they tell you we do. Do they? So I was literally, I had a, another crystallization moment here as I was doing hours of research. 
And uh, it, the thought occurred to me, man, this is – the globe is like they've reverse engineered. The globe is like a reverse engineered thing. And I typed it into YouTube. I typed the term into YouTube. Um I, I literally went to YouTube and uh, and uh, this is this is what I typed in right here. Um, I typed in reverse engineer globe. Reverse engineering the globe. This is what I typed in. And I got a few videos and uh, one of the videos was from a YouTube channel called Stinky Cash. And uh, literally, basically, this dude released this video two years ago, read my mind. Basically, everything that was crystallizing in my head right now, this dude basically says it. I'll put a link to his video below. But yes, um, literally, reverse engineering. It's a reverse engineering. I had a sneaky peek at that video, and what he basically says is that we've taken all the observational and scientific evidence, and we've built the globe around that. I'm not really sure that that has legs as an argument, but I'll pop it in the description all the same, and you can take a look. Got yeah, brighter now, so um, that's what the globe is. It's they've literally taken reality, flat linear reality, the only thing we ever see, the only thing we ever experience, and they literally found a way to take that and superimpose it onto a fucking globe. And that's why gravity, you know, the theory of gravity comes with all these issues like dark matter, you know, like 90% of the universe is dark matter and all these weird anomalies, mathematical, theoretical anomalies that they can't explain. Well, dark matter isn't really a problem, it's more of a theory. And it doesn't make up 90% of the universe either. It takes up about 26, 27%. Dark energy, that takes up almost 70% of the universe. Now that is also another theory. It turns out if you take gravity out of the equation, um, it, these things are explained perfectly well without all this mysterious dark matter comprising the majority of the universe. It's, it's horseshit, guys. We, there's, no way, there's no way we live on a ball. I mean, it, I'm moving into a mansion next week. Did I tell you that? Yeah, it's uh, the, the mansion I'm moving into, it's the one down the road. Oh, and by the way, guess what? Soon, I'm moving into a mansion. Saying something a large amount of times doesn't mean it's true. In fact, your repetition of the phrase, there's no way we live on a ball, is probably you trying to convince yourself. My high IQ, like, skeptical journey, like... Oh, he's off again. Being a skeptic and like asking questions and not believing in the globe on blind faith just because everyone else believes it. But actually like being a skeptic because uh, I'm just I, – I mean I love subscribing to Skeptic Magazine and, and I love being part of the skeptic community. You know, so I love being a part of the like, like the YouTube skeptic community. It's just like we're skeptics. Like I mean I'm going to change my channel to like Red Pill Skeptic like, or like oh look like, like Mr. Skeptic. You are a globe skeptic. Nothing more. That's it. Please stop banging on about it. I think I'm going to call myself Mr. Skeptic. Uh, something like that, you know, it's just, you know, all the so-called skeptics, the controlled opposition skeptics, love to put the word skeptic in their fucking names and their little internet avatars and shit, but they're fake skeptics. But anyways. So this would be a perfect time to announce my new channel, Skeptic Man Dan. It's going to... Only joking. Hope you guys get the sarcasm. Yes, yes, I got it just fine. Um, but yeah, it's just every day, man. Uh, the, the more I look into it, the more I realize that the globe is literally just like this. It's literally a play ball toy for like low IQ, just dumb people. He places a lot of value on IQ, doesn't he? A lot. I mean, I'd say he has at the very least got a double figure IQ. At the very least. Um, uh, <laughs> he's literally like the bot, like literally like... So dumb. <laughs> it's just so stupid. It's embarrassing, dude. Like, I feel bad for how dumb you are. You so fucking stupid, man. But uh, again, guys, you know, just, you know, I just want to put this out there because, you know, I had another one of these moments, man, where it starts crystallizing. You're like, fucking Jesus. Holy shit. And, you know, you have that moment. But, uh, yes, I get that moment a lot. Right after I watch a video like yours, actually, to be honest. Just wanted to get that out there. Um, thank you guys for watching. You know, they, they've reverse engineered the globe. 
Um, they've taken the flat linear reality, which is the only thing we ever experience. Even if you get on a plane for 10 hours, it's just... No, no, I can't continue. I guess my IQ isn't high enough to understand his high level IQ research hand moving skills. Right, that about wraps up another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. I hope you all enjoyed that. I really enjoyed doing that one. If you haven't done so already, please, please do like and subscribe. Have a great weekend. I have been Simon Dan, and I will see you all on Sunday night for a special release. When it comes to Flat Earthers, there are lots of different types. First off, you get the religious ones. They take their beliefs directly from the Bible. For them, the Earth is flat, there's an ice wall, and a gigantic glass dome above us. Then you get the globe deniers. They profess to not know anything. They just think that the Earth is not a globe and that's that. And now and again you come across the model makers. They invest time and effort into constructing not only models of our Earth, but also our universe. Over the last six months, I've been working on a, a model of what the universe could look like from a geocentric point of view. What have I got myself into this time? Hello all and welcome to another Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Yes, that opening clip was from YouTube channel Flat Earth Universe, otherwise known as Flat Earther Martin Kenny. This man has appeared on UK morning TV twice, once with his fellow Flat Earthers and once by himself. He's also been interviewed by this guy. Apparently he's a big thing on YouTube. So when he came forward to say that he constructed not only a model of his Flat Earth but also the universe, I simply had to have a look. Um, obviously we've got the mainstream point of view, which is obviously very um, wrong in many ways. Um, and possibly right in other ways as well, which I'm going to try and prove today. So mainstream science is wrong in some ways, but correct in others. This is a classic Flat Earther tactic. Nathan Oakley is famous for it, saying something that he believes in, such as the second law of thermodynamics, and trying to prove that you can't have a pressurised system next to a vacuum using that scientific law, which he says is true, but the others aren't. They literally cherry-pick the science that they're going to believe in. Um, but the ancients, quite obviously, knew a lot more than, than we know today about, um, about these truths. So I used a method that I learnt off Santos, uh, the method of um, syncretism, um, to try and connect the dots and come up with a cohesive, um, geocentric universe that makes sense at least. Of course, we'll never know the truth, the whole truth, naturally, in this state of consciousness. Um, but I think we can certainly get as close to it as possible through syncretism. We already know the whole truth when it comes to our solar system at least, and I can say with absolute certainty that the Earth is not at the centre of it. I'm going to start. I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, my presentation is based on the cosmic egg theory, the theory that our universe is inside um, an egg or a shell, um, which is actually a torus field. Wait, 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 wait. So the universe is a giant egg consisting of a torus field. I don't know anything about this theory. I need to learn it. Let me get my notebook quickly. So um, what have we got? We've got giant egg made of torus field. Okay. Okay, everything is, is, is toroidal. Um, so... But if it's toroidal, it can't be an egg. I think you're confused. The torus is like a big giant donut shape. Let's call it the big donut theory instead. Okay. We interrupt your Friday show for an important announcement. Sam and Dan may have fallen in the clutches of illogic. In order to prevent any further damage, we here at NASA solicited the help of a well-known doctor. Take it away. Thank you for asking me if I want to participate, by the way. Hello, my name is Dr. Stronogov. What you see here is a classic example of flat earthism, a debilitating condition that has been plaguing our, well, about a hundred people. I'm gonna start from the beginning. 
Right. So in the beginning, all cultures and even mainstream science tells us that there was nothing, absolutely nothing, the void, emptiness, empty space. So according to all cultures, flat earther heads are fertile grounds for new beginnings? Food for thought. Today, science calls it infinite space, time and matter. OK, um, past cultures also had names for this. Um, the Greeks called it the chaos. Um, the Norse um, called it the Gunning Gap. Um, the Egyptians called it the noon. I am rapidly approaching the noon point of my attention span. Um, this is the void. This is everything and nothingness. OK, so first off, we have nothing. Nurse. Brilliant. Next. Careful, Simon, then. The logic is strong with this one. At some point, this void decided to separate a part of itself to create and experience life outside itself because it can. Because it can. I'm sure the ancient Egyptians used this exact phrase when describing Genesis. Um, this is the nature of infinite potential um, to use that potential. And the first creation, from our point of view, was what we know as the Holy Trinity, okay, which I've drawn there as the, uh, you can see the Vesica Pisces there, you can see the flower of life. The flower of life has been considered throughout the ages as a part of sacred geometry, a very interesting blend between science and esotericism. If you wish to expand your knowledge, I suggest you look it up. It's pretty interesting, but it has zero relevance with flat earth theories. This is the first form of creation in our universe. Mainstream science today calls this the point of singularity or the great attractor. It's the same thing. Religion would call it uh, the father, the son, the Holy Spirit, protons, neutrons, electrons. Burger, chips and a Coke. Extra onions on the burger, please. Um, many cultures called it different things. You, you'll find that the gods or the creators in all cultures always are in threes. They're always in threes. So three is the magic number of creation. Three things were made. Okay, got you so far. So, these are the building blocks of life. I prefer to call it um, electromagnetic pulses of sine wave or frequency. I like how it's his preferred way of calling it, even though he has to read it off the paper to remember it. Which is basically a star. This is the first star. This is God, the creator. We are all stars. Everything is a tomb, as, um, as Santos always says. Everything's a star. It's, it's all it's all the same thing. We are stars. The sun that we look up at, you know, in the sky is a star. The stars in the firmament are stars. God is a star. Creation is a star. Everything is a star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Everything's a f***ing star. This is starting to get quite complex. The first order of business was to create a home. Now we're getting somewhere. Or a hub or a shell way it would experience life separate from the whole. So obviously remember this Holy Trinity is still in the void. It's still in the, in the infinite potential, but it needs to have its own world in order to create um, and, and experience life. Right, I've had enough of this theory. I wanna see the model. I'm gonna skip on a bit and see what we can see. Which is basically... Careful of your model, man. I've been waiting for this. This, this is the Ben Ben, this is the earth, but this is the top half. So if you imagine this at the top, there's also a bottom bit, an upside down pyramid. Right, hang on. So we're in a giant donut and the earth is a disc and underneath that disc is a pyramid that's upside down and we're all in the middle of that donut. No, no more. Very good, Simon Dan, you're back with us. And that is sitting on the great deep, on the waters below. And above, you've got the waters above, which are the atmospheres, right? Right, so we're in the middle of a giant donut and the earth is a disc and there's an upside down pyramid underneath that disc and we're all inside that donut and there's water above and water below. Right. Okay, so the whole thing has got a name. In Kemetic Egypt, it's the Ben Ben, right? But on the top, this is Mother Geb. If you're looking from the top, this was Mother Geb, okay? In Greek mythology, the whole thing is Gaia. But the top, as you see it with these concentric rings, is Atlantis or Atlas, okay? In 
Um, Norse mythology, they just call it all Midgard. Norwegians are a bit lazy, aren't they? Not naming the top bit. Norway, that's really not on. Okay, they had one name for it. In Vedic cosmology or in Vedic scripts, they call the whole thing the Burloka. But the top is the Bu Mandala. The concentric rings are the Bu Mandala. Okay, it's also interesting that in Greek mythology, they said that Mother Gaia had two children. Okay, this is Mother Gaia, the whole thing. Had two children. Who are the two children? The two children are the top part and the bottom part. Prometheus and Epimetheus. These are the two held be below us. Okay. Right. I hope that makes sense. So I'll move on to the next slide. That makes no sense whatsoever. What you've done here is make somewhat of a mythological smoothie and mashed all the creation mythologies of Earth together, while somehow whilst explaining it, still kept them all separate. It really is a mess from start to finish. I dare say, if you're still listening, that your brain is probably now dribbling out of your ear hole. I require your assistance, Doctor. You again? What do you want this time? You see, Dr. Stroganov. It's Stronagov, Dr. Stronagov. It's written on the door. One should never be gullible. Maybe you didn't write it there. Maybe it was the ducks. The ducks? I shouldn't have mentioned the ducks. Moving on. I have problems. Yeah, you have problems. You see, my brain is leaking out of my ear hole. What? I said my brain is leaking No, out. I heard what you said. What did you do? Nothing. Did you watch Flat Earth videos again? That information is confidential. Yes. Oi, how many times must I fix this for you? You're a real miracle worker, Doctor. A guardian in a white robe. Yeah, yeah. Here, watch two Simon Dan videos and call me in the morning. Is 4 a.m. okay? Actually, don't call me in the morning. Okay. Actually, please stop breaking into my office. Of course, we must all get back to our duties. Thank you, Dr. Stroganov. It's Stronago. So, when they tell us that the Earth has got three layers, a crust, a mantle, an inner core, and an outer core, that is inner Earth, inside this Ben Ben. Oh, God. Fight the Flat Earth? I'm tagging you in because I can't take this anymore. Don't worry, Simon Dan, I've got this for you. Hey guys, I'm Fight the Flat Earth. Thank you very much to Simon Dan for letting me on his channel to talk about, um, what, what is it we're doing? Uh, a cosmic egg. Oh, for f sake. All right, let's see what the flat earth is saying. Right, now that we established that this is what the whole Earth looks like, our entire Earth is a pyramid bumandala with four concentric rings. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you there because the world is demonstrably not a set of concentric rings. The evidence for the shape of the Earth is really, really easy to find. The problem is that you flurfs have created an unfalsifiable narrative in your heads, so you dismiss all evidence of the shape of the globe. One of the best examples for the shape of our planet is the Himawari 8 satellite. The Himawari 8 is in a geosynchronous orbit about 22,000 miles above Japan. This satellite images that entire side of the planet every 10 minutes. You can compare the cloud patterns you see to any live webcam on that side of the planet and you will find they match exactly. It's so accurate that it spotted wildfires on the Mongolia-China border in April 2016 before anyone else and was able to track and predict the path of the fire, allowing it to be dealt with quicker than normal. Right. One, two, three, four. Everything's in fours in the universe. Right? Everything's in fours, you say? Then how come earlier on in the video you were very specific about saying it's in all cultures always are in threes. They're always in threes. Three, so three is the magic, is magic number of creation. Okay? Oh man, Look, I really didn't think that I would have to deal with this, so we're gonna have to take a little trip to the remedial classroom. <laughs> right class, settle down. I said settle down. Mr. Pratt, why are you not wearing any trousers? So you're telling me that you haven't learnt to dress yourself yet and there was no one there to do it for you this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> Please go and see Lost and Found. Anyway, class, I know that maths isn't your strong suit, but if you pay real close attention to this, we should be able to understand. Are you ready? 
four is a bigger number than three. There is a mountain range separating us from the worlds at the center, from Eden, from Shambhala, Hyperborea, okay? And outside, they've got their own wall separating from this. This last one has got the greatest one. It's called the Loka Loka Mountains in Vedic scriptures. These are the Loka Loka Mountains, the great, great mountains, right? And these are the last mountains before the Taurus field, the cosmic egg. Is this guy for real? Am I hallucinating? So beyond this, there is no land. It's the cosmic egg blocking us out from the void outside, right? Okay, so Simon Dan, you really were not kidding about that egg thing, huh? Wow. Just, just, just wow. So there's a Taurus field around this outer world. There's a Taurus field around this one. There's a Taurus field around that one. And there's a Taurus field at the center. Okay. And what that would look like, essentially, is something like this. Okay, from our perspective, from where we are. Right, almost like those Russian dolls. Russian dolls in flat earth. Um, um, Russian dolls in flat earth. Um, I'm sure there's a joke here somewhere. Give me, give me a sec. Um, um, I'll tell you what, we might come back to this. Just, just carry on. Right, so there's one at the center, a torus field like that. There's one on the outside, on the outer worlds, a bigger one. Then there's a bigger one on the outside, right? Now, I noticed something very interesting about this. These toroidal fields, right, are probably oblate spheroids in shape. So when mainstream science or NASA says the Earth is an oblate spheroid, this is what they're telling us. They're kind of telling us a half truth, right? Which is why they can blatantly lie with a straight face. Nothing. Because they know they're usurping the truth. And when it comes out, they'll just probably say, well, you're too stupid to understand what we're saying. So I'm always amazed at the way that Fleurs managed to twist science to suit their own personal narrative. Here he is saying some incredible things to justify his madness. First, he's suggesting that this imaginary Taurus field is an oblate spheroid. And then he's suggesting that when the truth comes out, NASA will just brush it off as people not understanding what they said. No, and do you know why that not just NASA, but every other space agency and private space company in the world tell you that it's an oblate spheroid? It's because it is 100% an oblate spheroid and everyone in the world isn't lying to you about everything. The Earth is 100% without a shadow of a doubt an oblate spheroid. This top bit is what um, mainstream science calls the Van Allen belt. This is the Van Allen belt, this toroidal field. Right, they tell us there's a field of energy that they cannot go past called the Van Allen Belt. This is it. No, that's really not what the Van Allen Belts are. The Van Allen Belts are an area of charged particles that surround our planet. These belts are caused by particles from solar wind becoming trapped within the layers of Earth's magnetic field. The belt traps energetic particles like protons and neutrons, and to a lesser extent, less energetic nuclei like alpha particles. A lot of flurfs jump on the misunderstanding of the Van Allen belts and use it as proof of the flat Earth because we can't get past the Van Allen belt, so therefore we never went to space, blah, 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 blah. There is a reason we find it harder to get past the Van Allen belt safely now than we did in the 60s and 70s. In the 60s and 70s, the technology wasn't as digital as it is now. There was much more analog things. Uh, transistors and resistors were more susceptible to the radiation from the Van Allen belts. Basically, the advances in technology means we have to take more steps to protect the people and the equipment that we send to space. By the way, they also tell us that there are five Van Allen belts in the universe. Now, this is something I've never heard before. Five Van Allen belts throughout the universe? I'd love to know where you got this information because I literally couldn't find anything on Google or Bing, Ash Jeeves, any of them. The Van Allen belts consist of two layers between 400 and 36,000 miles up. They also tell us that our universe is um, covered with um, cosmic background microwave radiation, which is basically a torus field. So they're telling us that the whole universe is inside a torus field. Cosmic background radiation electromagnetism. So again, they're telling us the truths, but in a twisted way so that we don't figure out exactly what it is. Okay? So that is what it would look like from our perspective. 
Again, with the twisting science to suit your narrative, the cosmic microwave background radiation is literally the remnants of the beginning of our universe. It's had many experiments conducted on it and we've launched satellites to space literally just to monitor it. Over the course of nine years, thanks to the discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation, we've been able to image the entire visible universe. So in conclusion, the Earth's not flat. The universe isn't an egg. Please stop saying such idiotic things. It makes me sad to know that there's this much stupidity in the world. Thanks again, Simon Dan. Back to you. Thanks for that, buddy. Excellent job. I think I've recovered enough now to continue. Well, my job here is done. I'll go change the lock on my office door. So I'll try and put this together so you can kind of see what it looks like inside the egg. Okay. So now we have, we have the universe, okay? And here it is, okay? That's the top of the Bumandala. And this is the top half of all the Taurus fields. Of course, they run through the bottom as well, with the different suns and moons revolving around these Taurus fields in each of the lands. So, when NASA says they're going to Mars and they plan to go to Mars, they are telling the truth. Mars are these outside lands, the outer lands, where Mars is the sun. Oh yes, that wonderful object Mars, which has an average surface temperature of minus 60 degrees, is a sun. I can honestly say that this project is the biggest waste of time I've ever seen. What a load of old shit. I'm done with this, I can't, turn off the camera, come on. I can't do this anymore. And, and where's my latte? I'm losing the will here, mate. I'll just cut. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right, that about wraps up another episode of Flat Earth Friday. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please, please do like and subscribe if you did. Thanks very much to Fight the Flat Earth for your assistance. His channel is linked below. I've been Simon Dan, and I'll see you all on Tuesday, where we'll be talking tree stumps. There is a flat earth YouTuber in the US with a massive following. Quite unbelievably, he has amassed a staggering 243,000 subscribers. He must be able to sell origami kits to paper merchants. Why would they lie about all of this? Well, when you sit down and you really think about it, it's simple. The Big Bang, evolution, spinning ball Earth, chaotically darting through infinite space where eventually our sun will die out, creates the ultimate mind control. He's ODD reality and he's making a case for flat Earth. And welcome to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Yes, ODD Reality, as he is called, has crafted somewhat of a cult status for himself amongst other Flat Earthers. So much so, I've seen a video of the great D Marble salivating all over his own camera in the hope he gets to talk to Mr. ODD Reality at one of the conferences. It's pure cringe. Taking on this Flat Earther looked to be a big job and needs to be done in two parts. So I rolled up my sleeves, settled down, and took a look at one of his more recent Flat Earth videos. The Case for a Flat Earth. Welcome to ODD TV. He's got a voiceover lady. I want a voiceover lady. For the remainder of the video though, we're only going to address points that ODD himself states. The Earth is officially classified as an oblate spheroid, meaning that it's bulging at the equator and it's flattened out at the poles. Here's a short clip with Neil deGrasse Tyson. So Earth throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. 
It's, an, it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear-shaped. It's like pear-shaped. It's like pear-shaped. I've heard flat earthers mention this pear-shaped thing many times. Having the quality of being pear-shaped is very different to being shaped like a pear. Here in the UK though, the term pear-shaped means something altogether different. I'd put it in context like this. That flat earth movement has gone a bit pear-shaped, hasn't it? They're always perfect spheres, and some of these are claimed to be single shots. Yes, how oblate are we talking here? Well, Earth's polar radius is only 22 kilometers shorter than its equatorial one. There's no way you're picking out that difference with your eye alone. For all intents and purposes, it's a sphere. Not only that, but the images that NASA gives us are never really consistent. Here's three separate NASA images of the Earth, and North America is a different size on each one. How many times do I have to debunk this one? Continent size depends entirely on how far away you're taking the photo. Look, this is a picture of North America on my famous globe, taken when I was very close to it. This picture, though, was taken from much further away, and I zoomed in to make them appear the same size. Clearly, you can see North America looks larger compared to the whole Earth in the first photo. This is essentially because we can see more of the surface of the Earth the further away we are. Your first piece of evidence in a case for a flat Earth is refuted. Speaking of oblate spheroids and perfect spheres, both of them would have detectable curvature, right? Well, it's not showing up for anyone who tries to find it. Let's jump right to the current world record for long-distance landscape photography. This photo defies the curvature of Earth, even with the heights of both mountains factored in. 273 miles away. It's mind-blowing. From point A to point B, the shortest car ride would be eight hours. I want to look into this a bit more. So this world record attempt is taken from Peak de Finistrelis, an elevation of 2,820 metres. Peak Gaspard is the peak that provides us with the world record, and that is 443 kilometres away and stands 3,867 metres tall. Plugging all of that into the curve calculator and taking refraction into account, we can see that the hidden value is 3,816 metres. That leaves 51 metres left we should be able to see. Now given that in the photo you can barely see Peak Gaspard, then that makes perfect sense and is exactly what we'd expect to see. The photo proves nothing. Your second piece of evidence, in the case for a flat Earth, is refuted. A popular belief that is constantly used as proof for the globe is boats disappearing behind the horizon. But this is actually just an optical illusion. Humans can only see so far. But with super zoom cameras like the Nikon P900, or even just a telescope or some binoculars, you can bring back ships and boats that have appeared to go over the supposed curve of the Earth. So what about in this pic, where it's zoomed in as much as you can, but it's still going over the curve? Or this one? Or even this one? Did you know that the word horizon stems from horizontal? The definition of horizontal is as follows. Parallel to the plane of the horizon. At right angles to the vertical. Synonyms. Level. Flat. Plane. Smooth. Even. Alright? It's called a horizon, not a curvizon. Oh, you're such a wordsmith, ODD. Very, very clever. Of course, you've neglected to mention that horizon does look horizontal to us here on the surface. So why would we call it the curvizon? Your third piece of evidence in the case for a flat earth has been utterly refuted. You know who else knew that water doesn't curve? The ancients. As you can see here, we have the Egyptian, Norse, Hindu, Mayan, Inca, Navajo, Greek, and Hebrew depictions of a flat earth. These are the cosmologies that they knew. Oh, come on. The Hindu one has us on the back of a turtle, for Pete's sake. 
You see the sun and the moon inside the firmament in most of these depictions. So is there any credence to this idea? The answer is yes. There are many times, just like this, when the sun shows us how close it actually is. Many people admire the beauty of the scene like this, but they never stop and think about what we are seeing. And what we are seeing are sun rays that are telling our eyes that the sun is local. All you have to do is trace the rays back to the source. Tell me, ODD, is the sun right behind these trees? I've traced the rays back. Or perhaps you can tell me in this photo if the sun is directly above the surface of the water. One of the things that I struggled with the most when it comes to flat earth is why does the sun rise and set? I couldn't make any sense of it until I realized that the sun was much closer and much smaller than we are told. The sun appears to rise and set due to perspective only. What we are seeing here is the actual path of the sun versus what we see because of human perspective. If this was the case, the sun would get smaller the further away it got. This photo, called a solar analemma, shows that it doesn't. Your fourth piece of evidence, in the case for a flat earth, is refuted. Right, that about wraps up part one. Part two for this video will be out next month. If you enjoyed this, please, please do like and subscribe for more. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourself a great weekend. And I'll see you all on Sunday night, GMT, for the next live astronomy lecture. Today's video was voted for by my patrons. They get to vote every month on a video to be dismantled by me. If you'd like to get involved in that, then I'll pop a link in the description. There are many different reward levels. Please, please do check it out. So what is it? I hear you cry. Hey Tubes, Jonathan's wrong here, Tooth and Budget. So anyway, uh, here's a quick diagram. I was just watching something. That's right, it's a video of a man with a picture of a smiley face. Hello all and welcome to what is now a UK institution, Flat Earth Friday. Thanks again to my patrons for voting for today's video. The video that lost, by the way, was from our old friend Ranty Flat Earth. But my patrons convinced me there's already enough Globe Earth proof out there. Why look at more? So that clip at the beginning was from YouTuber Jonathan Was Wrong. How very apt to have a YouTube name like that. He thinks he's found evidence that the North Star directly proves a flat Earth. Let's see how wrong he really is. And um, I think this is an extremely important point, but a lot of time um, people can't really, you know, they, they need to physically see it. So here we go. Obviously not to scale, but you know, none of this is real anyway. So it's not to scale, but you want to point out to us all that it's none of it is real anyway then what's the point of your demonstration if you don't believe that it's real? Why do it? So, okay, imagine that's the sun. Now imagine that's the earth. Yeah, definitely not to scale, but I will point out that the earth is real. So that bit before where you said about none of it is real was kind of a debunked yourself moment, wasn't it? Okay, now the sun is traveling in that direction while the earth is spinning around the sun and the earth is wobbling on its axis. What is an axis? Hey Google, what's the definition of axis? Here's the definition of axis. The means or opportunity to approach or enter a place. Let's assume he means axis and move on. Now, the North Star always appears north. Groundbreaking stuff from Jonathan was wrong here. It's always due north. Now, look at, the, look at all this movement. Going around that. So, it's going around, it's going around something that is moving in, in a direction, while it itself is wobbling. So, just to, just to show you, or, or, or try to, try to explain how this is physically impossible. 
so here's the sun traveling through space. Oh, I got a car. Oh, bloody hell, I was just getting into that. You were pushing the paper along and everything. Go and sort the car out and come back. All right, that was out of nowhere. Okay, so anyway, sorry about that. Just had a bunch of cars, massive rush out of nowhere. Kind of random for a Sunday morning. It was only 8.30. Anyway! You're filming your Polaris video at work on a Sunday morning. Blimey, you flat earthers don't rest, do you? Blah, blah, blah. So here we go. That little guy is supposed to be the sun. That little guy is supposed to be the earth. So here we are chugging along. Chugga, 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 chugga. Going this way. Okay, so everything's moving in that direction while this here is moving like this, basically. Oh. So that's so it's spin around the earth. So, I mean, uh, around the sun. So while it's doing that, it's also doing this. So let me try to... So... This is the path, basically, that the Earth is taking. <sighs> Literally do not know what he's doing right now. Okay. See it? All right. Now, that's, that, that's, the, that's what they tell us the Earth is doing. How, not only how are we seeing the same stars every night and have for thousands of years, but how is the, how is the North Star always, 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 right there, all the time. It's not possible. Distance, man. Distance, distance, distance. The North Star is around 4,000 trillion kilometers away. If it was in your back garden, you'd have a point, but it's not. The stars are so far away that our movement is irrelevant. Imagine being the size of a microbe on the floor in your house. Now, no matter where you move or what direction you move or how fast you move, the light in the ceiling is gonna stay pretty much where it is in relation to you, isn't it? The existence of the North Star proves just that one, that one thing proves that the Earth is stationary. If you believe it's close, which it's not. All right, it also just happens to be a flat disk. Oh, it happens to be a flat disk, does it? I've got no evidence for that, but it just happens to be true. Well, I've got evidence that the sun is hot, but it just so happens that it shines up my ass as well. Space is a lie. Look at this stuff, are you kidding me? Actually think about it. But here you go. This is this is this is our perspective. All right. This is our perspective. How the heck is the north? Literally, we're going in this direction while we're doing this, and we're spinning. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, we get the picture. You can stop spinning your piece of paper now. Okay. How's the, how the hell is a North Star light years away and always due north while that is our perspective? I've told you how. Listen, man. Please. Please tell me. I also like how it looks like a little smiley face. That's not a smile. That's a smirk. Even your piece of paper has taken the piss out of you. A little fish. A little, little happy fish. It's a happy little fish. Anyway, love you guys. Um, share this with your friends. Have a good discussion. Science. You tell us that we don't know science. Well, you know what? We use science all the time to prove that the Earth is flat and stationary. And to prove that evolution is a lie and to prove everything else. That's a long list, buddy. And it's not science you use, by the way. It's other people's YouTube videos. And they're about as scientific as a soiled nappy. I don't think I can stand this science badger any longer. Last chance, Jonathan. Anything else you want to say? is the north literally we're going in this direction while we're doing this and we're spinning look at this look at this oh my word he's off again we'll leave him to it right that about wraps up another flat earth friday thank you very much for joining me if you liked it please please do like and subscribe i've been simon dan have yourself a great weekend and i'll see you all on tuesday where i've potentially been debunked
Imagine my absolute delight when I found out there was going to be a documentary on Flat Earthers. And now imagine how much more delight washed across me when that documentary absolutely ruins them. Hello and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Before we begin today, a small correction from Tuesday's video just gone. In it, I mentioned how a plane's wing generates lift. Now, a combination of bad script writing and bad line reading meant I got it slightly wrong. Apologies for that one. However, the point I was trying to make is the same nonetheless. Now, being so close to Valentine's Day, I thought it was very appropriate that the documentary spent a lot of its time focusing on the flat earth power couple, Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer. In case you aren't sure who these two people are, Mark Sargent is the first guy who kind of made flat earth more well known. A lot of flat earthers won't admit that, but he kind of was. He's also the guy that leaves comments all over my videos about something to do with introducing Flat Earth to my subscribers or something like that. And Patricia Steer is the host of YouTube channel Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, which regularly guests Mark Sargent. She says stuff like this. This growing channel. Yeah. And it can't be Simon Dan. That's an no, insider joke. Simon <laughs> Dan. That's this growing oh. channel. Oh. And by that fastest growing channel for this year. Yes, of course. Right. With real subs. <laughs> so, the documentary. Let's check in with Mark and Patricia as they meet just before they go and visit the Space Museum at the Houston Space Center. This is the oh, entry. Whoa. Okay, this is impressive because of magnitude of size. Wait, we're the only ones here. Does everyone see how big this is? We're the only ones here. I'm going to say something that's never been uttered in any NASA facility ever. Oh, I can't wait. The Earth is flat! Yeah, she really did that. And it echoed. That was brilliant. What you're looking at is part of the greatest science fiction story ever told. What if mainstream science figured out that the world was not a globe? So Mark mouths off about the Saturn V rocket while some genius on YouTube puts a video together and laced it with the Inception soundtrack. By chance, I found this video shortly after it was released and I decided to make my own version. The link for that is in the description. It was one of my very first videos. But for now, here's a short clip. Cries of fake ISS, the ice wall and no curvature were pumped through the hose of the World Wide Web, allowing more to drink from their ill-educated waterhole. The flood of paranoia swept across the internet. Everything NASA had ever done was being ridiculed and mocked. Later on, the two of them are ruminating about their friendship. Being on with me doing The Secret Show has made your face more recognisable. And being on with you on Strange World was sort of a way that people got to know me a long time ago. So we've been having a lovely symbiotic relationship. Like a whale that has those smaller fish on it that like eats all the algae in the gills. Boy, I better be the whale in this story. <laughs> this was actually quite touching and I began to get a warmth from the two of them. Now usually, under normal circumstances, to me they're just flat earthers and they're wrong about a lot of things. But here, I just saw them as just another two human beings and believe it or not, a tinge of compassion tugged at my conscience. Patricia and I are going to be hosting the video awards show. But I don't want to go, can I just stay? You had a nice time, right? I did have a nice time. Yeah, I had a great time too. It was pretty fun. A really nice time. Hang on in there, buddy. We've all been there. Another thing this documentary accomplished well was talking about the experiments that the Flat Earthers have done. Flat Earth legend Bob from the Globebusters team decided he would try and get hold of an incredibly accurate gyroscope to try and prove that the Earth is motionless. The Earth spins 360 degrees in 24 hours, so it's fair to assume that if you use this gyroscope, there should be a 15 degree drift after only an hour. 
if we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. Wow, you better hope this works, Bob. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Oof. Now, <laughs> obviously we were taken aback by that. Wow, that's kind of a, a problem, <laughs> right? Too right it's a problem. And guess what? They refused to accept the results. So they tried it again. This time encasing it in a gorse chamber as they thought the gyroscope was picking up the spin of the sky, not the earth. And guess what? Still a 15 degree drift. Here is Bob a little bit later on at a flat earther get together chatting to another flat earther. But the rotation is not looking good at this point. That's weird. That's so <laughs> we don't want to blow this, you know? Right, right. You're I mean, like, we've got $20,000 $20 $20 in, in this yeah. freaking gyro. But yeah, if we, if we yeah. dumped what As we, we found right now, yeah. we would be, it'd be bad. <laughs> it would be bad. You don't say, Bob. Pretty catastrophic, if you ask me. So, Stress what I just told you is confidential. <laughs> and there, the Flat Earther shows his true colours, ladies and gentlemen. It might not be all bad for the Globusters team, though. Jaron has thought of an experiment, too. We have a backup experiment. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the Earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. Oh, excellent. I've got my fingers crossed for you, Jaron. Team Globusters is counting on you. Okay, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his... Um... Oh, dear. It's not looking good, is it? There's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light uh, way above your head. Interesting. Interesting indeed, Jaron. And yet, this man still believes that the Earth is flat. Look at him. You can literally see the second that his heart is smashed to pieces with this experiment. I thoroughly recommend that you go and watch this documentary because overall, it's a nice story. You get to check out all the movers and players of the Flat Earth community in the US, and there's some lovely globe proofs as well on the way. It's out on Netflix today. It's called Behind the Curve. Go and check it out. Right, that about wraps up another episode of Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for joining me. What an episode it's been. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe. I have been Simon Dan. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday, where we'll have a look to see if Brian Cox has been caught out. See you then.